Uh, what do what do men struggle with the most in dating? In terms of dating, this is a good question. I probably need to give more thought to this, but just my immediate response would be: I think a lot of guys sell themselves short. I've noticed that as I'm getting better, and I, I'm in a continual improvement process, but as I'm getting better, I've noticed, and I say this to guys all the time too, that your game really gets ahead of you. So, so I'll be going about my day to day interactions, my day-to-day -day business, and then I'll have an interaction with a girl. And then in hindsight, it's always hindsight, I realize, oh, okay, well, this girl that you once thought was out of your league is into you, or Jaron, you missed this subtle sign. And I know when I talk to a lot of guys, I think they do that too. They think that things are not quite possible, that they're, that they're incapable of achieving whatever their goal set looks like in their dating life. And they really hold themselves back. I think that's probably the most important thing. How does one break out of that mindset of holding yourself back? My advice is you got to get out there and put in the reps. It's like anything, going back to the sports analogy, or uh, I still go to the gym just about every day. I, I miss it today because I've got a, got a buddy in town. We were out exploring. But uh, it's the same with anything. You got to get in your reps. You're, you're going to take some losses. Uh, we were talking about baseball as a baseball player through college. And realistically in baseball if you bat three four three hundred four hundred you're a damn good ball player but that still means you're going to fail a lot more than you're going to succeed and it's really like that in any sport so i think guys need to start looking at it from that mindset and approaching it from that framework that hey i just got to get out there and do it i'm going to get shut down i'm going to fall flat on my face i'm going to have failures but you learn little valuable lessons along the way and the more you do it the more insights you have and then eventually you get to the point where you have your own personal plan put together or your own framework or structure, whatever you want to call it. And then it becomes kind of innate or, or more natural. Of course, there's always room for improvement with anything you do, but you get to the point where you don't have these mental hangups anymore. When you encounter a girl and you think to yourself, okay, well, I've been in this situation countless times now, you kind of know what to do at that point. How do you help men make a life worth living and loving? Oh, nice. You did the research. That's my tagline. I know, and <laughs> lives worth living and loving. Um, I think the biggest thing is just helping them get out of their own way. Uh, I know for me, that was a big thing in my transformation, if you want to call it that. It was really, I sat down one day and started to do a mental audit of everything going on in my life and even little things. Like I lived in California. I had two cars at one point. And just the stress of thinking, well, I have the truck parked on this side of the street, but Tuesday and Thursday are street, street sweeping days. What side of the street is on? What day is it? Okay, well, I think I'm on the right side of the street. Wake up and there's a $38 ticket. Just those little, little things. And uh, if you really sit down and write them all down or just do a mental checklist, just imagine all the little tiny things you have in your life that just give you a little bit of stress or a little bit of anxiety. So I got to the point with the whole minimalist mindset that I want to get rid of this. I don't only, not only do I want to have two cars, I want to have no cars. I want to have no car payment. I want to have no expenses. I want to uh, not have a lot of stuff. I opened my closet one day and there's a bunch of shit all over the place. And I started tagging everything. And then, okay, well, once I wear this shirt, I'll take the tag off and I'll put it on one side of the closet. Six months later, you realize you're only wearing like 15 or 20% of your wardrobe. So, okay, get rid of the rest of that. And for me, I think that was the, the biggest thing is just getting the noise out of my head. Um, I also view the world in a sense that everything in your physical environment is a reflection of your internal state. So I wanted to reduce all of the clutter, all of the noise. One, I was able to achieve peace, but I was also able to start being focused because you don't have to worry about, oh, did I park on the wrong side of the road? Oh, do I have to pay this tab? Oh, where's the ticket? Oh, I, I logged into the online portal. Oh, of course it's California. The online portal's fucked up. So how do I pay this? Am I going to get towed? Am I going to get pulled over and have a warrant? All of these things just disappear when you start downsizing and it doesn't even have to necessarily be in your physical life. You don't have to go as extreme as I do and get rid of all your stuff. But in terms of the mental energy you allocate to things, start getting rid of that. And I'd like to apply that, that framework or that mindset when it comes to the game topic in terms of, am I not good enough? Is she out of my league? Am I, am I too short? I, I hear, I'm sure you do too. I hear it all the time with guys. I'm too short. I'm not, I don't live in the right place. I don't speak the right language. I, and there's, there's always a, a multitude of excuses. And when you start getting that negative self-talk out of your head, you realize most girls don't care. They just want a guy that gets it and they can feel your energy. So if you're calm, if you're at peace, if you're cool at your core with yourself, then they'll, they'll vibe on that and it'll make your interactions a lot easier. And really, if the girl is innately attracted to you, it, may, it makes your work a lot easier because you don't have to be over gamey. You don't have to do the shtick or have all sorts of tips or tricks or tactics. You can really just be yourself in the moment, but it takes a lot of work to get there. So I always recommend guys start with, 
start starting start to divorce yourself from the negative self-talk or the negative energy the negative thought trains in your head and see what that does for you it'll it'll clear up a little bit of space what are some of the steps that men can take to eliminate some of that negative self-talk oh that's a good one one thing that i like to do that i recommend to a lot of guys is do um do a self-audit every morning or i call like an all systems check so you know when you're driving your car and all of a sudden the emergency light comes on and with older cars, it used to be like, oh, no, is my entire engine going to go out? Is this going to be a, an engine and transmission swap? Now, with newer cars, it's usually not much. It's like a sensor that's faulty, or maybe there's some dust on like a plug or something like that. There's so, so many electronic gadgets and doodads in the new cars. So I kind of do it like that. I wake up uh, in that moment where I'm still half asleep and half awake. Just and that, my brain does it automatically now. Just run through things. Okay, what's what's on your mind? What's bugging you? What does the day look like? Walk yourself through the activities. Um uh, the, the crappy things you have to do, get those done first. That was, that for me was a big step in starting to take that step forward. And it'll seem monumental at first if you think, uh, for example, when I was younger, I used to be obese. And if you think, oh my God, I have to lose a hundred pounds. Well, that's, that is a mountain of a task. Where do you even start? But if you think, okay, well, let me, let me track this. Let me calculate this. I'm going to lose 1.5 pounds every week and then just focus on the micro goals. Then you can actually do that. And then got to be a little patient but when you look in, in, in life in the longer term you realize you can do a lot very quickly I think in the course of the year I lost something like 80 pounds and then it took another year to lose the last 20 but uh you know if you've ever like cut before or bulked or anything like that for sports the the closer you get to your goal the more energy and effort you have to put into it to to make to make uh, even the smallest amount of strides nice man what what would you say your purpose is and how does one find their purpose that's a good one. I don't know if I necessarily have my purpose defined yet. And that used to really bother me in terms of thinking, well, why am I put on this planet? What does my value add? Uh, one thing that I started telling myself that I don't necessarily know what that looks like, but I know that the world needs to be a slightly better place for me having been in it. And then I held that as one of my core principles. So that really started helping. Um, I'm still not really exactly sure what a clearly defined purpose looks like. And I don't even know if that's necessarily the answer, but I know that I'm going in the right direction because the more I head down that avenue, it seems like at first you have to start pushing towards it. And then it seems like you get to a point where it starts act actively pulling you towards it, where opportunities mm -hmm. start presenting themselves, doors start opening, uh, things that you once willed all of a sudden just pop up in your in your physical world. And that to me lets me know that, okay, I'm onto something. I'm heading down the right path at least. So um, I don't know if I ever will truly find my purpose, but it's more of just a feeling in your gut, something that drives you forward, that makes you spring out of bed every day, just knowing, okay, the answer is not clear yet, but I have faith and I have trust that I'm heading in the right direction and I'll, I'll keep putting the effort into doing so. Yeah, I think, I think um, you, you definitely are headed in the, the right direction. And I think you might need to take some time and just really like write it down and, and yeah. to really look at it type of thing you know what I mean yeah it's one of those things where if you hold the question long enough in your mind the answers will start presenting themselves to you so the details are starting to come in but I don't have a clear composite image yet uh, there's still some uh there's still some clarity or some muddy areas that need to be worked out a little bit got you so how does one balance their social life their work life and their dating life that is a good question. So I have been in a mini monk mode these last couple of months. I'm in between two fairly large corporate contracts. I have another one starting in a few weeks. So I've ju I've just been ha having my head down, grinding, trying to figure out little nits and tricks that I can do to get my channel to the next level. Uh, trying to get all my workflows in place. Trying to get a plan in place for when I'm when I'm officially on board with this new corporate client. Um, it's actually not a new corporate client. It's a company I've worked for forever, but completely new role, new division, new scope of work. So. Um, I'm really focusing on building the framework upon which I will scale that operation once my contract starts with them. So um, I, I vacillate a bit. At times, I'm really, really focused on one area of my life when I identify, okay, here's a weak area. Um, I like to have a baseline. So I establish a pretty nice financial baseline for myself. Being in between contracts, I took a month where it still did pretty well uh, comparatively compared to the people that are stuck in your nine to five corporate type gigs. But for me personally, once I achieve a level, it's I don't like going below that. So uh, I put all my eggs in one basket. I put all my focus in that area to get it back at baseline or a bit above baseline, uh, whatever I've established for myself. So um, I'll do that now. It's more on the professional front, the financial front. Years ago, uh, when I started my journey into improving my dating life, it was more on the, okay, I got to figure out this 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 girl front. Uh, 
when I was obese, okay, I need to lose a lot of weight. How do we do this? And that was my focus. And then once you get it figured out, I'm a systems theory type guy. So I like to build structures or systems into my life. Uh, I have a buddy here. He always jokes like, dude, I think you're OCD. I'm like, I don't care. It works for me. Just, just have routines and have structures in place to where you really don't have to think about it anymore. And that, that goes back to the minimalist mindset where I don't want to wake up every day and have to have to go through the process of trying to figure out what I need to do in this area of my life. I just find something that works and then I stick to it. And then if other areas of my life level up or they upgrade, and then I realize, well, this one area that used to be working really well for me is now lagging behind comparatively, then I'll shift my focus to that. So I'm more of a systems guy. Um, I identify different pillars or different verticals in my life. And then as part of my daily audits, I go through how am I emotionally, how am I physically, how am I spiritually, how am I mentally, how am I financially, how am I in my relationship? Uh, vertical. And then usually I like to try to keep all those balanced, but the, let's be honest, life happens. Sometimes one goes way up, sometimes one goes way down. Um, and it's really just about keeping that equilibrium between all of them. What's the most important piece of advice you would give to someone when it comes to finances? You know what? I'm actually not much of a financial expert uh, in terms of investing or anything. I do pretty well, but I usually just stick to index funds, allocate whatever the employer matches to a 401k if I'm on a W-2 type contract or they have that available. But I know for me personally, uh, the biggest things are, and these are just basic personal finance tips, um, track your expenses, know what your budget is, know, know, where, know where your dollars in are coming from, know where your dollars out are going, what they're going to. Uh, realize that a lot of things you think will make you happy in the short term, like uh, a new car that costs uh, half of your annual salary. I did that when I was young. It's really cool for the first couple of weeks. And after that, once that car payment hits, that insurance payment hits, and then the gas hits and you factor it all in, you're like, oh, I'm spending a thousand dollars a month for an automobile that I drive maybe 20 miles a week. Uh, realize that will make you happy in the long term. And I think the biggest thing for me, which I always knew this as a kid, so I grew up in a pretty conservative area. My, my grandparents are real conservative and they instilled these values in me, but uh, oh, these damn credit companies, hey, we'll give you a loan. You're like, okay, yeah, you know, you just kick the can down the road, road financially. Oh, I'll pay for it later. I'll pay for it later. And then later it comes like, oh, I have to pay for all this stuff I did 10 years ago. This sucks. Um, the, bi the big thing is, for me at least, reduce your expenses as much as possible and try to maximize your income. And then it's that, it's that difference where you really start getting ahead. And that's what I'm currently focused on now. What would be the, your best piece of advice for someone who's trying to climb the ranks in their career? I think that really depends on whatever industry you're in. Uh, just realize that when you start off, you're going to be junior level. Uh, take that as an opportunity to learn. So a lot of people, and I hear younger guys do it all the time, and I used to do it too. Oh, I'm so much, I'm worth so much more than this. I have so much value. Why am I only getting paid this when I do all the work? And the boss doesn't know what he's doing. Well, your boss was in your position at one point too. So you kind of got to put in your dues. Uh, even when I was younger, I was always really good at reminding myself that, okay, I'm not here to necessarily take the company to the next level when you're in real junior type positions. I'm here to get an education and I'm getting paid to do so. So uh, just kind of shut up, put your head down, work, grind it out, pay your dues. And then at one point you wake up 10 years later and you realize, oh, I'm an expert in my space. And I never even realized that other people realize that they start calling you or this is a, this is where I screwed up uh, about mid-level of my career where I'd go into a job interview. Hey, what's your salary expectations? I'd throw out a number I thought was really big. And they're like, okay, yeah, we can do that. And you're like, oh, okay. I'm still selling myself short. And mm. even to today, I'll, I'll quote clients on stuff like, yeah, we're good. When can you start? And just like, oh shit, should I have asked for more? So, uh, so you got to kind of figure out what your value is, how you show up in the organization, where your place in the pecking order is, but, um, look for opportunities, obviously, obviously to, to move up to. And this was advice that I actually got from a business coach years ago that I didn't realize as a kid. When I was younger, I used to think uh, the way to be successful in a corporate type career was the old American model where it's get on with a company, start at the ground level, work your way up. And then 30 years later, you'll be a C-level executive and you'll retire and they'll give you the Rolex and a pension and a pat on the back and a firm handshake and you'll be off on your merry little way. It doesn't really work like that anymore. It depends on your industry. Some industries are still like that, but most of them aren't, especially with everything being digital. I, I hate it when people ask me, okay, well, we saw it, we saw it 10 years ago, you had 12 jobs in the span of five years. Why is that? Like, well, companies don't last that long. Most of these companies are underfunded or they, their goal is to be bought and sold by someone else. So I would have loved to stay with any of those companies, but the company didn't exist for more than a year. So that's kind of the world we live in. Um, a big thing too is the quickest way to increase your salary is by switching jobs, doing the three to 4% 
the cost of living adjustment every year, which they call a raise, which it isn't because inflation is much higher than that. So you're actually getting demoted year over year. That's not the way to do it. And uh, again, this is a new way of thinking for me, but uh, I understand that you won't get rich on a salary alone. So that's why I'm doing more of the consulting type thing. It still technically looks like a salary. I get paid on a two week pay schedule. Um, you, but when you're 1099, you can take multiple clients. Um, and another thing I like to do is if I'm, if I'm entertaining multiple offers or taking on multiple clients, try to find things that are somewhat similar so you can you can duplicate your efforts. So if I'm doing something for one person, I'm doing it across the board. So I don't have to do any repeat work. And that really helps out for me. So technically, I think you can get rich still on a salary, but try to do the multiple salaries. Try to sell yourself as a consultant, 1099. And then if you reduce your expenses as much as possible, then you end up with a surplus of cash, which... I'm in that point now, uh, especially because I think pretty much every asset class across every market's down. So I'm just hoarding cash right now. And then the minute an opportunity comes up, which it will, uh, then, then I'll be able to pounce on it.